Ja. Okay, so we've had the uh, bluefish marinating in milk in the fish cooler right here. So essentially what we have here is uh, another uh, batch of gas station uh, ingredients and uh, you know a very fancy gas station you can find a lemon. It's rich crackers, butter, eggs and a uh, little aluminum foil and what we're going to do is we're going to take an egg wash and then we are going to uh, make a, a crusted covering of crushed up Ritz crackers over the bluefish. And then we are going to put that in the uh, Easy Bake oven. That is preheating up to 350. So now, let's get the bluefish out that's been sitting in milk for uh, 
lift it. It's in the nook overnight. Alrighty. Pull it out. It's a whiter meat now. It's not as red. Um, not as red. Typically, we're going to give this a nice milk bath. I mean, sorry, egg bath. It already has milk on it. I'm going to give it a nice crumb. Uh, Ritz cracker. You know what? Let's double dip this bad boy. How about that? Extra. I was just going to take some uh, a piece of aluminum foil. All right, let's use two. Put our fillets in there. We'll do up another one. And I'm just going to make like a little tray. I'm going to bake it at 350 for about 20 minutes or so, roughly. We've made a little aluminum foil tray. I'm going to take a little bit of butter. And in the Camp Moore oven. Geez, why is that hot, Ed? 350 degrees. One more. Roughly small fillet, so it doesn't take long. Just make sure it's done. Oh yeah, nice and nice and done. All right. some fresh catch to celebrate the harvest. And mm -hmm. soaking those in milk makes all the difference. Now typically with bluefish I would either smoke it or uh, make a dip because it is a very oily fish. But don't think you can't make it. You know, you see how it's it's. You know, it's not haddock white, but it's 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 uh, it's a lot whiter, and the taste is great. I mean, you know how white that meat is. I mean, it's it's really delicious. A lot of people don't realize you can eat bluefish like that, but little Old Bay. Uh, some old bay chips to go with it. Living large.
all cut up and ready to go in. This is actually a combination of the belly cut and a little bit of the back on one side, uh, mostly the belly. Um, essentially, it's got a, a funky little texture. The bottom or the uh, the part closest to the skin is very firm, and you'll notice that <coughs> these uh, the deeper you go, it's like a veiny material. Now that's very tender, but uh, in any case couple different ways to do it. Um, some people like to uh, mix this up with like hot sauce and then roll it in flour. I've seen people eat it with the skin on, which I, I would never want to do, honestly. I can't imagine why you'd want to eat that skin. Got to cut a piece off there. But uh, anyway, this is just a quick little recipe for uh, stingray nuggets. An egg wash. We've got a uh, batter that I've made of white cornmeal, white flour, a uh, little Old Bay, and some camp salt which is basically a little bit of everything. And then I make a little tartar sauce out of simply mayonnaise, relish, and a little squeeze of lime uh, right there. And I do that because this is basically, you can get relish and mayonnaise at any gas station. And if you can find a lemon or a lime, there you go, one of those uh, fake lemons, or whatever they call them. So we're gonna give those a little wash and uh, then it's going into the hot grease and the uh, fire disc. When that comes up to temp, uh, I like to cook them at about 350. All my fish actually fry at about 250, so um, waiting for that to heat up and we'll get them going. Okay, we got our nuggets all battered up, ready to go in. Uh, just waiting on the grease. We got our grease up to temp. Don't want to overload it, but put a few in. Now, it doesn't take too long for them to cook, you know, uh, a few minutes. Um, like any fish, you don't want to cook. You don't want to overcook it. Like, uh, that's the worst thing you can do to any fish, never mind uh, stingray. Here we go, stingray nuggets. A uh, little, um, I call it gas station tartar sauce because basically mayonnaise, relish, and a little bit of lime, or even a fake lemon if you could get it. Um, you get yourself some quick, quick little tartar sauce. We got some Old Bay potato chips, so it's officially fish and chips. With a Narragansett, uh, Narragansett Fresh Catch Citra Session Ale. Absolutely great accompaniment for this. Uh... Alright. This is delicious. It's like any other fish nugget. I mean, you've got... I mean, if I if I served you this and didn't tell you it was a stingray, you would probably not question the fish. It's just a very... Um, no rugged, you know, I mean, no, uh, you know, strong taste. Absolutely delicious. And a little bit of tartar sauce. Um, you can see, as I was saying, some of the texture. That's the that's my favorite part right there. And uh, I, I don't even know what I, I would have a hard time comparing it to any other type of fish, taste-wise. I mean, it tastes to me it tastes closer to haddock than anything. Um, some people say shark. I don't get that. It's absolutely delicious. So. If somebody brings a stingray into camp, don't be afraid to cut the wings off, skin it out, and cook it up in some batter. Absolutely delicious. Okay, just going to take a second, and because uh, everyone's going to ask, not everyone, but inevitably, I've gotten a lot of DMs on my Instagram, and people are asking me what I use for bait, what do you, you know, what do you use for line, what do you use for this and that. So just quickly, <clears throat> everything I caught in the Outer Banks, I'll be straight up with you was caught on one of these, all right? Just a bluefish fireball rig. The, Not a big deal. I do prefer, I'll tell you right now, get the steel leaders if you can, because those bluefish, the mo those, those big bluefish, you know, 26, 27 inch bluefish will just rip through mono. I'll give you an example, this 40, um, when I was fishing straight up uh, finger mullets, I was putting a trailer hook on with 40 pound test fluorocarbon, and those fish, bit that like it was two pound test. This is just completely useless for for those for those bigger fish. Now you can catch the smaller bluefish with it, no problem, but those big ones, 
will rip through. So, as I said, I like the steel leader. Um, not a big deal. I think this retails for, okay, $4.29. See them everywhere. I will say, there's another size smaller than this. Uh, the hook's a little smaller. Uh, don't even waste your time. I straightened out two of those hooks and lost the fish, which I, I think I can show you. <laughs> That's a big fish. Oh, he bent your... Bent the hook. Zoom in on that or focus. Yep. Yeah, that's a big fish. That's why I lost a 40 pound braid, a 50 pound braid. And then, um, uh, which is fine as long as you don't have any problems. Um, and when I say that, on bluefish, this isn't an issue because if the fish turns, it's only going to bite, you know, if, if this gets inside the bluefish's mouth, 99% percent chance you, you, he's not going to bite it up. Not saying they won't, but if you use the mono, then uh, they can certainly snap it off. Now, I caught three sharks, in which all three of them broke me off. Um, but they were actually, I was, I was snapping the braid, because one of two things happened. First of all, if you've ever caught a shark, you know, six or seven or eight feet long, you know you just can't turn them. And when they do turn, they often sometimes take the whole rig in their mouth and that 40 pound braid is, uh, it's like dental floss in a shark's mouth. The other thing with a shark is that it, um, their tail is almost like uh, sandpaper. So if that tail keeps whacking that braided line, it's just going to snap it off. So sharks are a whole different thing. If you're fishing for sharks, I mean, most guys I know, you know, they, they're set up with the shark, you know, the leaders, the, the, shark, the shark rigs, the leaders, yeah, yeah, the steel leaders. But you are going to hook into sharks. There's no question. And if you can land one on 40 pound braid in a bluefish rig, more power to you, but good luck. Um, the other thing, here's my other, see, and I save all my bluefish rigs, you can see. They wear them right down until eventually they, they get through them. But the other thing, I use a three to a four ounce pyramid. And this is, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's a pyramid. You, you all know what that is. Um, but in the rougher surf, I typically like the Sputnik. And this is a great little rig, and it, it hooks on just like your, um, I'm sure you've all seen these, but hooks it on like you would your pyramid, but if the beauty is it actually digs in for you. So it actually helps hold your bait there. And these things, they're only about five bucks. This is a three ounce. And uh, it's, it'll, it'll keep your bait out there. You don't have to keep, you know, recasting and recasting, getting tangled in other people's lines. And they make them on up, but I like a three or a four ounce max for this and I can cast it a country mile. So anyway, um, that's the whole rig. So every fish I caught, the sharks, the stingrays, the bluefish, the big bluefish, the small bluefish were all on this rig. And uh, with the use of one of one of one of two. And for, for bait I was using cut mullet. And the cut mullet I like because it'll go on and stay on. It's got a real thick skin. You can use the finger mullets. I mean, they'll use you can use a lot of things. But I had the best luck on you know big chunks of just cut mullet, and uh, they they just couldn't I, I couldn't keep them couldn't keep them off it. So anyway, that's just a rundown of the tackle. Not much to see, but I know people are going to ask. Okay, so the bluefish. Um, I've been in milk for about three days and I just took it out and rinsed them off. And we're going to make some fish tacos. But as you can see, um, fish has absolutely no smell. I mean, it smells like really, you know, good, good, healthy fish. If you know fish, you know what I'm talking about. You can tell when it's not. Uh, we're going to um, saute it up in that, or poach it up in that uh, pan right there, which should be about ready. And uh, we're going to make up some uh, bluefish tacos, if you will. So. Essentially, whenever you're cooking with flour tortilla, tortillas, or otherwise known as gringo tortillas, because Mexicans don't actually use flour tortillas, you always want to cook it. A lot of people actually eat it right out of the bag, um, which you can do. But, you know, you can do that. But essentially, you want to cook it. And a good way to do that See that, see that black flaking? That's essentially what you want, and it starts to bubble up, and that's essentially almost done. But 
what I do is I put it on the uh, lowest setting I can get on my gas stove. And this is actually kind of tricky because this is an old stove with thin, sharp grates. And the newer uh, ranges have, um, you know, thicker grates so it slides easier. But um, that, that with that bubbling and that, that starts to turn hard, um, then, then that means that's perfect. Uh, this one's almost perfect, actually. You want just a little bit of bubbling there. And that's done almost... Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I like that. And there's one bluefish taco with a little bit of um, uh, Hellman cilantro lime sauce and uh, a red citrus... Uh, hot, not a hot sauce, but a little bit of red sauce that we had left over from a... Um, a restaurant the other night we save all our stuff that you know from restaurants and uh, over a bed of rice with some lettuce and that should taste pretty good a little bit of lime squeezed on and mmm yeah I'll go with that Who, what's that, Lieutenant Robert Maynard? He was the British, because this was all British then. Yep. And this was, uh, he was the, I believe he was, the, oh, was Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. He uh, was the Lieutenant on the ship that captured uh, Blackbeard. Blackbeard. In 1718? Yeah, they shot him, stabbed him, and everything, cut his head off, threw his body overboard. And they say his body swam around the boat a couple times, even after they cut his head off. Legend of Blackbeard. Yep. The only reason I knew 1718 is because I'm reading it on my viewfinder. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool.